with zeal for the Son. Guys, you can do all this stuff that we're doing for a lot of wrong reasons. You can do it for the sake of the ministry. You can do it for the sake of so many things. If you don't do it for the Son, it's not right. It's idolatry. We learned lastly that the Lord Jesus Christ is the source of all spiritual life. St. John tells us that in Him was life and the life was the light of men. He is the eternal fountain from which alone the sons of men have ever derived life. Do you see that? To call Him away? You're going to call Him away? You're going to call Him a truth? You're going to put Him in a group with other prophets? And say He's like them? Listen to what Ryle is saying. He is the eternal fountain from which alone the sons of men have ever derived life. No one has ever even breathed a breath apart from the Son of God, Jesus of Nazareth. So the moment you start talking about Him as a way, you're no longer Christian. You can't stand and defend that one truth or at least die for that one truth, you're no longer Christian. You balk at that, when you're being publicly interviewed, you've denied Christ. Whatever spiritual life and light Adam and Eve possessed before the fall was from Christ. Whatever deliverance from sin and spiritual death any child of Adam has ever enjoyed since the fall, whatever light of conscience or undertaking or understanding anyone has obtained, has all flowed from Christ. The vast majority of mankind in every age have refused to know Him have forgotten the fall and their own need of a Savior. The light has been constantly shining in darkness. The most have not comprehended the light, but if any men and women out of the countless millions of mankind have ever had spiritual life and light, they have owed all to Christ. Now Christians would agree with this, but at the same time they deny this many times in their view of the Old Testament. They think Jesus is predicted there, but non-existent there. That's not true. The sun's all over the Old Testament. It's His work. I, I'll never, never, never get over the fact that the closest we ever come in the entire Bible to a visual description of Yahweh is in Isaiah 6. And John tells us that Isaiah saw the sun there. Now that's not a coincidence. Such is a brief summary of the leading lessons which these wonderful verses appear to contain. There is much in them without controversy which is above our reason, but there is nothing contrary to it. When we say that there is a mystery, we're not saying it's irrational. We're simply saying it's a mystery. Don't confuse the two. A mystery is the truth that God is one and there are three persons in the Godhead. That is a mystery, but it is not illogical or without reason. It is not on the same superficial level as saying, uh, can God make a rock He can't lift? Or can God draw a square circle? That's an absurdity. It's illogical. So when we speak about mystery, we're not talking about something irrational. We're talking about something beyond what our minds can comprehend. There is much that we cannot explain and must be content humbly to believe. Now, but it's...